Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit-Down. Oh, man, my favorite show on television is currently on television, and we're getting it every single Friday, and while it's Monday for me, I'm a little behind at a busy week, and of work, and week, week, all of it, it's just a lot sometimes, <laughs> but, I mean, you see what's on the shirt, so let's not waste any more time, because... The fact that it's Monday and this came out on Friday, I've waited already too long. A uh, lion pope chair, take a seat. We are, of course, getting ready to take a watch and dive into spoiler filled afterwards. Into the boys, season three, episode five, the last time to look on this world of lies. Wow, that's a heavy title. Um, <laughs> like, like, just reading that for the first time, like, a lot to digest there, and I'm going to do that while I watch the episode. Um, but I'm psyched, man. Uh, we're obviously where we left off last week. I mean, huge turmoil for the boys. I mean, Kimiko is knocking on Death's door as her healing functionality is not working. Her power function out. Her healing powers aren't working after taking a direct blast from whatever energy is produced inside of Soldier Boy. And I'm very interested to see where that comes from right it doesn't seem like he has energy any kind of or any hint of any energy uh powers like in his past here in america but he's been you know his body after a nuclear explosion of some kind taken by the russians winter soldier styled him i'm sure he's gonna have a lot of amnesia but did he in whatever that you know where the the other heroes uh you know of payback saw him you know that said you know like crimson countess like i saw him die did that give him the blasty power did the russians give him the blasty power i'll be interested to see if we tackle that obviously though the most important thing for me is what's going to happen to kimiko and based on the image and, and considering where she is and what we've seen in the trailers uh this looks like we're going to get our big musical number i hope that does not mean the end for kimiko i, I i'm hoping that they're able to you know do whatever kind of surgery or whatever you gotta do to stabilize her. She's one of my favorite characters, so I'm very nervous about that. Um, and, and what that could mean for the boys, right? I mean, even if Kimiko doesn't die, I, I feel like they are so close to breaking. And Huey looks like he's about to be a V-addict. Um, Butcher, I I'm interested to see if Butcher gave it to Huey. Or if Huey actually found some way to steal it from him. <laughs> like, based on what happened i don't I, like, I still don't know how that happened um and then on the the boys side i mean not the boys side on the seven side i mean who doesn't love a, an unhinged homelander man and where he is right now i mean the type of power that he is gaining and the god complex that he is building i mean he straight up just committed murder and not just any murder i mean i think he's personally committed at least two legitimate murders that we've seen here i think the girl fell off the building I think he either laser shot her or pushed her off. Um, and then obviously killing not just anybody, but one of the seven, like just newly inducted seven number, Supersonic, where I guess the episode hasn't aired. So, mm, oh no, the episode had to have aired because everybody sees Home Light. So yeah, like he just killed a legitimate public member of the seven straight up. Be interested to see how he'll spin that, but doesn't really seem like anybody can stop him working with Victoria Newman, giving her V um for her daughter which i don't i feel like that could be it feels like whatever happened to newman's daughter based on what we saw like her back do in that split second feels like it could be physically transforming which could create some really interesting storylines just for that family context there and then obviously the overall story and then with the rest of the seven i mean we haven't seen some characters for a while but you got Deep, who's got to be at this point, Homelander's like number two, and A-Train, who was on the out, just got himself back in by, by giving, you know, uh, Homelander all that info, let alone what are his motivations for doing that, right? Like, Homelander just burned him, now I'm going to go give you a gift. Obviously, one, not trying to die, and two, maybe being able to spin whatever good graces he gets from Homelander into doing things that he wants to do, so... As always with the boys, you got all your characters in really interesting places, and uh, I am very, very psyched to dive in to episode five, the last time to look on this world of lies. So let us get nice and comfy, because we got 62 minutes on our hands. I love the fact 
that Amazon, much like Netflix, understands. Give you an hour of content, you get all the storytelling done. Disney, take notes, man. I can't say it enough. Our television is something we've all been living with since I was like this high. And I'm sitting on a couch, so that's about two and a half feet tall. Uh, maybe maybe three and a half feet tall. I'm really bad with that. But anyway, it's okay, so Disney, take notes, man. We want our long television because it's the best. You ask me at this point, boy's the best thing on TV. Ozark, one of my favorite shows. Stranger Things, absolutely crushing it. Like, it is a proven fact. The best show of all time, The Sopranos, hour-long television. Proven fact. You gotta start bringing, bringing me hour-long television, Disney. I'm, I'm getting tired of these shorts. I'm so nervous about Obi-Wan on Wednesday. Oh, I'm very distracted. Got a lot going on in my life. But I'm gonna I'm a take a break from my life and dive into the life of the boys. Episode 5, the last time to look on this world of lies. We are pinwheeling. We are pinwheeling. And now we are still pinwheeling my TV sucks and we're playing. That that dildo fight sequence is one of my favorite things though. Oh yeah, and the only person that doesn't seem to be able to back down from Homelander and not get anything. Stand stand straight up like schooled Homelander and walked out no problem. Very interested to see where we go there. We just go ahead and jump for it. <laughs> like I said, that little fight sequence. I guess there's got to be some sort of finish, I guess, to the Nina storyline too, right? Boys are in trouble, man. I don't like it. Oh, here we go. We're gonna get the. We're gonna get the soldier boy recording out the gate. Subject skin has demonstrated remarkable durability, which includes internal tissue. They are in Moscow right now. They just shot him in the mouth. <laughs> what? Wow, legit invulnerability. They can't be killed. All right, she's not dead yet, but she's not at the hospital either. Poor Frenchie. Stable for now. Thank God, man, I can't lose Kimiko. This shit. High radiation level, so whatever happened did happen. 20 sieverts of radiation, sulfuric acid cocktails, more or less shoved Chernobyl right up his ass. <laughs> Way to put it in layman terms, butcher. That's how we got him nasty new powers. Oh, dude! Like, why would you go after the eyeball? But, hmm. Listen, mate, we can't hang about here looking for him, right? He's Ivan's problem now. We've got to get Kamita one, so a proper doctor. Well, that's why she's not at a hospital. You killed gunpowder, didn't you? Did you use your little laser eyes? It's too fucking right I did. The whole point of what we do is that no one should have that kind of power. Well, ain't that just fucking fairies and dancing dildos? And Em's right, though, man. Like, that, that is the point. <laughs> oh, man, oh, Huey. Fuck. Looks like the frog right wing in your mouth. Come on, good. Okay? <laughs> 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 Busher. But with the greatest humility, I accept your nomination as CEO of Vox what? International. Ashley is CEO. Amazing. Okay, Ashley, uh, that's enough. Let's not bring the room down. Apologies, <laughs> sir. Thank you, Homelander, for giving me the opportunity to serve this board at such a pivotal moment. You've rid us of Stan Edgar and restored honesty. One question. Our EBITDA margins will drop a tiny bit. How do you want to handle that on the earnings call? What's your name? Maureen. I don't know, maybe you think you should be sitting in my chair and I should be sitting all the way down there in yours. I like how all the other people realize like you just need to play into him right now. I'm so stupid and you're so great. Uh, you already effed up, lady. Maureen, you're embarrassing yourself, you should go. So who's next? We look forward to working hand in glove under your tremendous and competent takes one person to set him off. That's terrifying. Allow me to introduce you to the new head of crime analytics, the deep. <laughs> oh, that's where he ends up. Wow. She'll be up and about in no time. We'll see you in the morning, yeah? Fuck you. I can't believe they were able to get her home. You still got me. 
Scooby likes that feeling. Tragically relapsed into an opioid addiction. Drug Justice overdose. Was slated to join the seven. There's your stem. Come here. She looks like hell. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Slept for days. Huey. Homelander killed Alex. He fucking murdered him. And it's all my fault. Let me take care of you for a second. Tell me you found it. What killed Soldier Boy? She's not dumb, Huey. Your arm is broken. Where the hell is your past? You're, you're really gonna want a white claw. <laughs> there are three. Just, I'm just trying to get a beat on what uh, part you're most upset about. Is it the part where uh, Soldier Boy's loose in Russia or the part where I, I took some temporary compound V? Um, it could be both parts. <laughs> Told you right away, though, right? That's, that's no secrets. It's got to be worth some points. You want points for not lying to me? I would like to retract that statement. Um, Huey, Huey, you could have gotten yourself killed. Absolutely hated it. You loved it. I fucking really loved it. It was awesome. I mean, you know me. If a guy in the car next to me gives me a dirty look, I'm like fucking Dom Toretto taking off, trying to get away from him because I'm quick and I'm all about family. But... <laughs> about family. <laughs> I saved M.M. Me. I could like... Teleport. Teleport? Yeah, I, I just... I knew how to do it. I just clenched my butt and, and I jumped and... No, Huey, that was stupid and dangerous. Clenched my butt and jumped. I can't oh, lose you too. The show, man, the writing, so good. Oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's over. It's not over. It's you and me against the world, right? I love you. I love you too. Huey's so gonna get his hands on more. He's getting on a plane. The kid hates you right now, Butch. How the fuck is Soldier Boy still alive? <sighs> Maeve. You look like warmed over shit. Well, at least I'll be sober in the morning. There'll still be a suit. Those soups are so fucking vile. Why do you want to be one again? What are you going to do with those? No thanks. Been sober four months. It's been a year for me. Oh, man. Oh, man. With great power comes the absolute certainty that you'll turn into a right cunt. They're all just people. All of it does is just amp up all that shit that's already inside. Brilliant tweak of that concept. Bunch of walking nuclear erections, you know? And it's not just Homelander. I mean, you've, you've fucking all got to go. Every fucking last one of you. Yeah. Yep, knew that was coming. You still think you're too good for me? Oh, this ought to be fun. I was wondering if Pusher was gonna shoot up first. This is, this is a wonderful pairing, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. You really got me now. So I can't see that night. You really got me. Ah. Our hospital scene must be coming soon. Wake up, can you go? Ah! Why is she there? You do not fuck me, I fuck you. You work for me now. Piotr Simeonov and his daughter Katarina, you do it today. Jeez. She's just a child. It's never stopped you before? Oh, that is some heavy shit to learn about, Frenchie. Oh, Kimiko. Monka? Hey. Doesn't have her power. She doesn't have her power. French is terrified. Supersonic trusted you, and you got him killed. 
I don't know what you're talking about. You fucking coward. Why are you so desperate to be with people who hate you? Excellent question, Starlight. Congrats from Lindsey Graham. <laughs> He's such a good slicker. Anyway, wow. I hope you know how much Homelander appreciates your loyalty. To thank you, Homelander has agreed to a meeting with you in Blue Hawk. <laughs> okay, great. I'll just pop outside and get him. What? Hey, big fan. And you don't want people to say that you're being racist, right? You know, it's actually racist to call somebody racist. What is this? Is this like a canceled thing? What can I do to make this right? Make an apology or some shit? What a great idea. Wow. Not very hard for him to get home. It's one of the, it's one of the rare, like, storytelling pieces, like, jump pieces. Like, we didn't even see him, like, get on or off the plane, just in the city already. But I'll take it. I'll take it. Cause we about to get all of a soldier boy, I think. Also, it doesn't seem like he was... <laughs> in a very different world. Oh, maybe he was... Maybe he was Winter Soldier. I was gonna say, it doesn't feel like he's been brainwashed at all. But maybe there's, maybe there's a trigger. At least a PTSD trail, uh, trigger. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. You got Janine watching this guy? I know, I know. His language gets a bit salty, but it's good for her. How is this good for Janine? Uh, he's standing up to the crooks, the corporations, and the legacy media. Hey, you friend me on Facebook, I'll send you some stuff that would... I, I don't <laughs> want Janine watching any more of this garbage. Do you understand? Ready. Because Homelander is a psycho piece of shit, that's why. Daddy! 19 are dead. The NYP is on American soil, M.M. Oh my god. No, Daddy, I want to go to the Science Center. Did I do something wrong? Oh my god. We need to handle this now. So, books lots on all the Sunday shows. Jesus, I meant that we need to stop this guy. Could you watch your fucking tone, please? God, okay, okay so why don't you go and do that? Well, we gotta worry about the share price and the beta margins. Ooh, Homelander's plan is already backfiring on him, it feels like. Jeez. That is a hole through a building. Only 19 did off that. Lucky now. Let me say that again, Butch. Huey! Ivy, hey, didn't you break your arm? It, it turns out it's a bad sprain, so I'm, I'm okay. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, lots of radiation. So whatever happened to him in Nicaragua, probably responsible. Oh, oh, Let me help you with Soldier Boy. I owe you that much, and then you don't go see me no more. Don't have much of a choice, M.M. <laughs> you, he's like... Knowing you, you already got a lead. What's that fucking do? You were saying? To find the guy, we'd have to come through every CCTV camera oh, in the city. To to take a dozen now. analysts working double shifts. Okay, then let's do it. Where is everyone? We are everyone. Deep fired most of the department. To uh, the residents of Trenton, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. As you know, superheroes often have to make, like, uh, split-second decisions when fighting crime. A a and I apologize if any of mine have been perceived as being racist. But that is not who I am, okay? Just ask my friends, many of whom are uh, are black what about what you did to raymond tuck he was unarmed would he have done the same thing to a white guy in mill hill i, I go where the crime is all lives matter black lives, black lives matter shut the fuck up oh no you knew this was coming holy shit That's all you do, A-Train. And it, <gasps> Oh my god, it's brother! Oh my god. 
you think he's dead? <laughs> Marvin. <laughs> I love seeing him pop up everywhere. It is wonderful. This is a legend. That's uh, quite a nickname. No, it's not a name. It's a level. <laughs> a ball riser. It's a great play on riser too. It's like, I mean, well, Stranger Things, a lot of people will know who he is now. But yeah, like, who's this guy? <laughs> They're using actual pictures of Paul. That's amazing. That's so good. Is that you and Roy Scheider? That's at the Chateau. That whole night's still a little cloudy to me. Hmm. If you ask Army Archer, I was balls deep in Golden Geisha, and Marlon Brando was apparently balls deep in me. <laughs> what, that's gay now? Fuck you. Who cares? What's the difference? Anyway, after that, I got Marlon to cut his quote on that still night picture, so I ask you, who fucked who? <laughs> hmm? Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm full. <laughs> so the legend was the VP of hero management over at VARC before Stillwell came in. He helps us out from time to time. See, when I was in charge, you go with your gut. That's when heroes were heroes, not these stage-managed silicone dolls. I've never even seen Homelander sweat, let alone butter churn half the cast of Falcon Quest at the Beverly Hills Hotel, <laughs> which I did. Two words. Shannon... <laughs> Legend, Soldier Boy came to see you. I need to know what he said. What are you, crazy? Marvin, he's a fucking doornail. So who's that coke for? That's just me. I'm writing my memoir. So if I ran the prints on that mirror, who would I come up with? Soldier Boy's not gonna trace this back to you. Trust me. Oh, like I trusted him? You forget what happened last time I helped? The underage hooker sting on Electroshock? Oh, jeez. Now you know what Soldier Boy did to my family because you okayed the cover up. I okayed a million cover ups. So just make this one right, will you? I thought I was staring at a ghost. He hadn't aged a day. Wait, so he doesn't get old? We kept that under wrap. Though it got a little fishy when he starred in that love and war picture with Phoebe Cates. He was 63, she was 19. <laughs> oh, fuck! Remember Entrapment? Connery, Bang Zeta Jones. He was like a thousand. <laughs> Came to pick up his super suit. I held on to it. You know me. I'm sentimental. Although I did actually wear the suit once for Kelly LeBrock. <laughs> you know what Kelly LeBrock? Fucking Google it. Big L, big B, the other letters. Yeah. So did he tell you where he was going next? Or that he was gonna blow up a fucking restaurant on 59th? Who the hell knows why talent does what they do? That's why they're talent. He also came for his girlfriend's address. Crimson and Countess. <laughs> Jinx, but and what do you say to the mayor who wants to uh, impose a citywide curfew oh. until the terrorists are captured? Jeez. America is safe, okay? It is safe. So, everyone, get out there, go to your restaurants, and uh, go to your <laughs> movie the way theaters, they parallel and, and live your life. Real world fun, okay? scenarios Maybe that we've lived through. through. Maybe Jake Tapper is trying to fuck with me. Or maybe you're just a paranoid, malignant narcissist who thinks everything is about you. You're about to oh, get no. me, aren't you? Is this happening already? What are you talking about? William Butcher. It's smelling all over you. Maybe you two brought that supervillain to town. John! Come on. John? I'm not cooking anything up with Butcher. Let's talk about this. Is Homelander's name John? Wow. I think John Doe. Was anything about us ever real? From the start, I hated you. She is playing a dangerous game. I mean, that's actually kind of funny, don't you think? He's so erratic. You want to know something else that's funny? <gasps> oh, jeez. You really can't tell what he's going to do at any point in time. Like, the writing for him is so good. I, I have no clue what he's doing. I know how you feel about this shite, but it's so dry. Oh, so why don't you come down? Off your aisles, just this once, eh? M.M.? M.M. is a soup? I kind of want to see it. Come on, M. My dad wouldn't want it. Your dad, the died of a dodgy ticker. Sue and Vought never get in nowhere. Yeah, if you don't draw the line somewhere, how the hell are you going to know where you stand? They ain't drawing no line. Which is why we got to. I'm in. Give me some. <laughs> I mean, who do you guys want? Do you guys want... Gaki, weak, 
freaking the fuck out, Huey, or do you want strong, confident, handling a shit, Huey? Without it, I'm, I'm probably dead. <laughs> That's true. Lad can think for himself. I like soup, Huey. Lacerations to vertebrae T6, T7, uh, T8, and T9. Geez. The damage is so severe that Nathan will never walk again. The next few months are going to be quick to save innocent lives. You know, to think that my donation to this community would be met with such intolerance just breaks my heart. Just breaks it. I got rhythm. Oh, come on, here it comes. I got my man who could ask for anything more. Is this actually, like, is she actually talking? So I felt like she was close before, but we're also going to get a musical number. I got rhythm, I got music, I got my man who could ask for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures, I got my <laughs> man who could ask for anything I more. I love this, I've been waiting for this all season. That's amazing. <laughs> this is great. You see, people who are doubting that Joker 2 can be a musical, while this type of absurdity plays into the boys perfectly, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about, where, like, <clears throat> you have characters who are living in their own psychosis. You can have <laughs> wonderful moments like this. And you can obviously play it in a much darker way. I got more good. I just said in of itself though is saying aloud what's going on with Kimiko mentally, right? Like where she's going. <gasps> well she ain't talking, but Oh Why is he gonna need to go for you won't go for <laughs> Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah. <gasps> oh no. Oh man. It's gonna break her heart. I've already got commitments from the orangutan so from Dunstan boy. checks in and the capuchin from Outbreak. Technically those aren't chimps. No, but they're famous. They're gonna be real draws. I worked with that outbreak monkey once. He's very good. <laughs> Seth Rogan! A monkey will want to be then right here. Uh, I love our little chats, you know, but, you know, meter's running, so... Hold your horses, sir, comes a lot, 779. Yes, Countess. <laughs> oh, you get them? Sure do. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> Those are much bigger than I thought they would be. <laughs> perfect. The perfect cameo for Seth Rogen here. Get ready. <laughs> He's so good. I love him. <sighs> Fucking sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Soldier Boy guy I'm coming ready. from? Get that spandex down and start popping those things in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! There he is! What the hell? Phenomenal. Oh, it wasn't Soldier Boy, it was Butcher. Your lover boy's on his way here. Soldier Boy, he's alive. How do you escape from Russia? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. You knew the Ivans had him all this time. I gotta get out of here. Okay. Untie me right now. He's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill all of us. Why? What you do? We made a deal. We got a big fish to work, and you're the worm. Is this a joke? Come on, guys, let me go. 
Ooh. What the hell's going on? Hey, what are you doing here? M.M. called me. Did he? Uh, just told her you might need some backup. You shouldn't be here, all right? It's dangerous. It's too dangerous for me. <laughs> what about you? Oi, you lot. Take your little tiff somewhere else. We're on the job here. Yeah? <laughs> okay, okay, look, you... You're probably gonna be mad, but I promise no more secrets. <laughs> Huey! <laughs> Oh, it's not important. You found clothes. more V. It's temporary V. It's Soldier Boy. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? You were supposed to call me. Yeah, and what if you got hurt trying to save me? But now you don't have to, okay? I can handle myself. I can finally save you for once. I don't need you to save me, Huey. I need you. Uh oh. There he comes. Uh oh. But you drugged him. What you do? I know you're never gonna forgive me, but you left me no choice. I can't draw no line in. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I can't believe you drugged him, man. Oh, here we go. Looking very Steve Rogers from Infinity War. You're that asshole from the lab. You want to count his head on a spike, don't you? Which sees in there? Yours for the tie-in. Consider it a gesture of good faith. Good faith for what? I was thinking that you and I have come to a little arrangement. What you like called the team-up. Yeah, buddy. You look so young. You don't. <laughs> Oof. Ouch. It wasn't my idea. You gotta believe me. How I, much I... did the Russians pay you? They didn't. What? That makes it worse. I loved you all those years that they burned me. I held on to the hope that you would come. That's heavy. That you would save me because I still loved you. Immediate depth to this character so fast. I hated you. We all did. Also, the comparison to Homelander and Maeve. Phenomenal. Oh, wow. He seems to have some more control over it. Bye, Crimson Countess. Let us handle this. You can yell at me. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Yikes. What happened? Keep an eye on him. He's had four or five megs of ruin now. <laughs> you fucking roofied him? Easy, Starlight. It's on our side. What are you doing? We wanted a weapon. Soldier Boy's our weapon. Y y you knew Butcher was gonna do this. Mm -hmm. Man never would have gone for it, and you... Look, you weren't supposed to be here. No more secrets, huh? You're teaming up with a murderer! This is the only way that I can save you from Homelander. I played dirty. I'm doing this for you. Whatever it takes. Come with us. You and me against the world. Yui. Please don't go. <laughs> if Starlight had gone with them, would they have just left MM on the ground? The layers to this show, man. Like... So many things, so many going, so many things going on. It, it's so good. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to digest in that episode. Um, as per usual, I loved it. Um, you know, I think it's a bit of a come down episode after the last one. Um, you know, I, I think four was, you know, one of our better episodes overall. You know, I always forget you gotta kill that before I put that up. Um, you know, but the last last couple episodes, right, have been, like, really, really on point. Like, just delivering all of the big things, the big surprises, the big shocks. And this is the thing that I love about this show, is that even in an episode like this, this is this felt like a palate cleanser. Like, like I think there's something big coming this week. And this was kind of a nice, like, reset your palate, kind of get the lay of the land of where everything is. And, you know, now next episode, we're, we're, we're going to be off and running. And that's what I love about the hour-long 
show, right? And, and a show that's more than six episodes, right? I think we're getting eight this season. I feel like we've gotten 10 in the past. Um, but that eight to 10 range is always, you know, money for me. Uh, it's the perfect, eight, eight to 10 hours is the perfect amount of storytelling when you're telling a big story like this. And an episode like episode five, you know, you can't be here all the time. You have to be able to come down so that the pop can come. Um, but you get a lot of really rock solid content and almost like, you know, a, a foundation for your second floor. You know, we're, we're getting ready to kind of wrap up you know, the end of our second act and launch into the third act of this season. And I think this episode does a lot of really good work. Um, one, uh, uh, thank God Kimiko is still alive. That was like my number one priority. This episode it was cement that right. Like we, I, I knew we were getting based on the image that we were getting the musical number. So you figured that she was going to end up in a hospital. Didn't realize that they would get her back to America before she was in a hospital. But that, you know, that's one of those things where, like, she's been having these kind of drift-offs. And that, you know, having that sequence wouldn't have necessarily meant that she was okay. So I love that we secured that. But also the fact that she lost her powers. And when you have a show that has been centered around a group of humans trying to take down soups, and now two of your guys... I, I, I mean, I'm going to say that they're, they're addicted. I, I think... Butcher and Huey are using the temp V at the right times, but I also think that neither of them intend to stop using the temp V as long as they can get their hands on it. Um, so it's interesting to see two of these anti soup folks leaning into the superhero powers, and your one soup that is part of the boys hating her powers, right? We've built that all season long that Kimiko hates that she has these powers. These powers have led to nothing but terrible things for her to the point that when you find out that Butcher is taking Temp V, she's like, why would you do this to yourself? So the concept of her losing her powers, and even in that moment, right, where, like, Frenchie is like, oh, no, right? Because I think one of the things that, you know, for Frenchie, the way that he cares about Kimiko, he never has to worry about her in the field because she can handle herself and she's invincible, right? Like you, you, you see the skill in that dildo fight. <laughs> it's, 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 it's always funny to say out loud dildo fight. Uh, but like when she is taking down all those Russians with all those dildos, <laughs> you can see her skills. Like she, she for sure has skills that if you took her superpowers away, which we've now done, she could still do what she did. Maybe not force a dildo through a man's eye hole. But, I mean, like, just the physical martial arts stuff. Like, she can handle herself. But even in that scenario, right? What you don't expect. The people that you're saving get scared, shoot you in the head. That's something now that becomes a, a legitimate worry for Frenchie. Now, Kimiko doesn't want to be in this world. But I, Frenchie knows, one, he's got to deal with Nina. Uh, little, little Nina kidnapping him here to go kill a dude and his kid, and talk about layers. Finding out that Frenchie, we you know we know he's an assassin, but like that he had no problem killing kids. It, it one it shows you how far that character has come since season one, e even without that revelation. Like just knowing how how Frenchie's demons really you know kind of controlled him to some degrees when we first meet him. To get to this point, right, where Kimiko is so happy. She doesn't have her powers, which makes it easier to walk away. And once they get away, she doesn't have to worry about that. She can just live a regular life. So she goes for it, you know, and she kisses Frenchie. And Frenchie, like I said, you see this, this arc for him where that moment freaks him out. Because I think it's the first time that he has felt legitimate love since whatever he had with Sherry and it freaks him out not in a bad way right like him retracting there isn't like retracting from the love but rather like I, I gotta reset and, and kind of think about like is this what what's right right now and you can see it in his face like he's he's happy and he knows that they've got some shit to work through before the season's over but like 
he can now, like, you can see that moment where the light's at the end of the tunnel and then little Nina shows up. If she forces him to pull the trigger, so to speak, what does that do for Frenchie? What does that do for that relationship, right? And this is where it's like the genius of the show and just how strong the writing is, is like these two characters both kind of coming to this revelation moment working off all of the foundational things that we've had from the first two seasons and we've had from the first four episodes and it's all displayed in those two characters where now you have a reset for them we've just laid a new foundation that story i can't wait to see where we go with the rest of the boys obviously a lot of turmoil coming for mm and butcher um and i kind of look forward i think to to an mm and starlight team up which could be really interesting where, you know, obviously we're all against Homelander in this scenario. But, like, you could see Huey and Butcher opposite M.M. and Starlight. And that's going to be fun to play with. And, again, it's another scenario where we're taking all the stuff that we built on and laying a new foundational layer. Where it's like, this first stretch for Huey very much felt like, you know... Him, him and Starlight were together. Really are them against the world. But he realizes he can't do anything. He gets his hands on some V. And like I said, I'm pretty sure him and Booker, Butcher are just straight up addicted to it. And if they can get their hands on it, they would take it regardless. I, I think if Starlight was right there and Huey had Temp V in front of him getting ready to go do whatever, like I'm, I, he would find a way to take it. And it's you know interesting to see where you know, that, that relationship between him and Starlight, them against the world. But you're constantly seeing that it's really like her against the world. And, and that the, the level playing field disappears, right? As soon as he finds out about Newman. Once he realizes that his partner in crime, right? You know, his, his you know, number, you know, like his person. Like you said, like they walked through, like they, they were the untouchables. You know, his best friend at his job is gone. And taking that away kind of strips that level playing field where now it's like, well, Huey's boss is a soup. So what he's doing, like it's lost something. So that, that level is shifted. And you felt the building of that in those first four episodes to the point where now it's like Huey's re-leveled it. But in doing so has also created a new unleveling because... Starlight's not happy with it. He's lying. He's not telling her everything, right? I even up to the point, like right to that's the oh, the genius of the show, man. The writing's so good. You can get to that end moment where she's like, "No more secrets, huh?" You know, because he's like, "You weren't supposed to be here." Boom, you know, and the dynamics of that relationship are in this very tumultuous place where. I don't think there is a relationship right now, but when you get to the other side of whatever all of this is, can that relation right now, I would say that's a salvageable relationship, but depending on what we get in the next few episodes and where we ultimately go with this, you know, Homelander and soldier boy storyline that we're working with, there might not be one. And that's going to be really Interesting to see how that goes and how much of Huey wanting to be a soup will play into how that relationship plays out. And if Huey gets put into a moment where maybe he's out there with Butcher kicking ass and the temp V wears out or wears off, does he look to just take V and become a straight up soup? Um, so I think all of that stuff is fascinating. Obviously, the Butcher and MM things, you know, like I said, we're, we're headed to one of these moments again where I, but MM is not going to be happy, especially knowing that, like, they had this plan where it seemed like they were on the same front. I would have to imagine that MM was not going to be okay with Soldier Boy killing Crimson Countess, even if that's how they were playing it up for her. I, it's just this new layer of trauma now for M.M. where it's like, I, you think you're on the same page, clearly Butcher knows you have to let him kill her, so he roofies him. And this is a guy who's already dealing with insane amounts of post-traumatic stress. I mean, getting to see the visuals of what happened to M.M.'s family, like, that's a lot, and now you've added a, a new layer to that, and again, it's one of these resettings for this character, where it's like, can he 
ever have any kind of relationship or work with Butcher and Huey again. Have they crossed the line, right? Like Butcher says, I can't have any lines. And Adam clearly does. I was kind of hoping that he was going to take the 10th V. Only because you don't want to see that relationship, you know, disperse. I don't want to see the boys disband. But this is now another step towards that. And MM's reaction will be very interesting next week and how he plays that or where he goes with it. Um, and then when you're talking about Butcher and relationships, I love the Butcher and Maeve relationship. Um, I think it's such an even playing field, right? I mean, having the two of them both being sober, right, and kind of going through that and abandoning it sort of at the same time, I would say Butcher's ahead because I think the Temp V is 100% like a drug, which is why he comes home and starts drinking, or is part of it, right? Um, but you have these two characters who have this emotional trauma, who have this emotional trauma that is tied to the same person, and you are just at this place where you have this plan, you think you know what you're going to do, and now you got to reset everything, right? Because there is no weapon. You know, Soldier Boy is the weapon. And I, that was just a really wonderful moment. Like, I enjoyed watching the two of them play. You could feel it coming a mile away. Um, the only thing I was wondering was, was Butcher gonna juice himself up and take that like, whole experience to a different place? But I, I like that he doesn't. Uh, I think that there's, even though they're both drunk, I think there's a level of genuineness there. And I think Butcher's feelings you know even though he right before he says you all have to go you know like I, not so much that he thinks he's better than Maeve but Maeve's a soup and even her like she's got to go in his world and I like that that's the preface right to that sequence because I think there's a change happening to Butcher I mean one like I said last week he cares about the boys he needs to do things that will make him not look like he cares or like he said he, he can't have a line but he cares about that group of people kimiko is one of those people could butcher really kill kimiko wipe her off the map now obviously he's not going to have to do that because she doesn't have her powers but like that that's kind of the scenario where it's like there's this kind of shift coming with both huey and 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 butcher and the temp v is obviously playing into that so I would say I'd be fascinated to see where that goes, but now our unhinged Homelander moment leads to Maeve. I would I would have to think that you're not going to kill Maeve off screen, especially when we've seen so many soups die on screen. Um, and I, I think, like I said, I was really digging where we were going with Maeve and giving Maeve some more things to do. I mean, her her back and forth with Homelander right before she was kidnapped. Really, really powerful stuff. I mean, I mean, the actor who plays Maeve is really doing great things with the little bit that she's getting. I was hoping she was going to have a more expanded role, you know, maybe coming into the fold with the boys a little bit more, but it's really only on the butcher side. But she's capitalizing with her screen time at, in every moment. And I, I, like I said, I don't think you would take that character off the board off screen, right? While we don't necessarily see the physical things that happen to Crimson Countess, we, we see the, the outcome right away. So I think Maeve is probably kidnapped somewhere. Um, Ashley, obviously, when she was talking to Starlight, was either about to say that she is being held here or that she's dead, and the emotional weight and things that she kind of pushes through in that sequence would make you think that she's dead, but I, I'm, I can't imagine. I, I can't. Um, but wonderful little horror jump scare moment you know with, with homelander all of a sudden kind of taking it taking it and then shifting it and it's one of these things where he's having this conversation we only see homelander you're waiting for the shift but i'm not expecting black noir to come out of nowhere and talk about a character we haven't seen too much of even though we've gotten a, a nice piece to that story you know last episode or two episodes ago whenever we we had the nicaragua background i think it was last episode um but I, and it's just like a really nice pop moment and, you know, continues to lean into the fact that Homelander is unhinged, but I think Homelander getting what he wants is not exactly what he wants, right? I love that exchange he has with Starlight where she wants to go find, you know, Soldier Boy without knowing it's Soldier Boy. And he's like, I got to worry about all these numbers and things and being on TV in front of the public. And that is I think our new kind of level set for, for Homelander. This is a character that's completely unhinged. There's nothing stopping him, even though he lets Stan Edgar 
kind of get the last word in and walk out last week. Homelander is a character, though, and really do whatever the hell he wants at this point. And in doing so, he's now being given, like, responsibilities and new things where you can see how it's going to start breaking him again, right? It's, I do everything that I want to do to get what I want. Now that I have what I want, it's not what I want. And you can kind of see this having to be like the head of the company, so to speak. While I think he could patch a lot of things off to Ashley. Like there's this new layer now where he's responsible for these different things. And those things I think are going to start getting in the way of him doing what he ultimately wants to do. Which, to be honest, is kind of fun for me not knowing. Um, I don't know what Homelander's endgame is right now. And that is scary. And the writing for Homelander has been so good because you don't know what he's going to do at any given point in time. Like, he really is in a place where it was like, you'd almost expect him to kill Maeve immediately in that moment. And then he doesn't. And you're like, huh. He's kind of going at this a different way. You know, granted, ultimately ends up going a way that you, you would assume it was kind of leaning towards. But, like... The writing has been so much where, like, Stan Edgar can get this moment. Unhinged, unhinged Homelander is still... He has obstacles to get through. And it keeps him erratic. And it keeps him... You know, you, you can't figure out which way he's going to go. Or what he's going to do in any situation. And not knowing. And the randomness of when he strikes. It's terrifying and is, be, is being written so well. Um, I just, I love it. And you can already see the issues that are arising that are going to be problems for Vought in the long run with things that he's doing. You know, like having all the power, much like Edgar said, you're going to regret that there's nobody to check you anymore. And regret being the one that's in charge of this stuff because you don't, Edgar knows that he doesn't want to do any of these things. And that's just going to start to break Homelander in a different way where he is going to be like I get this feeling that at the end of the season like he is going to be the most terrifying version that I think of Homelander that we've seen um and I I'm gonna say it now I think Homelander like they're gonna put it in this place where it looks like Butcher and the boys are gonna win but the show is already renewed for season four. Homelander's the best character on the show. Good guy, bad guy, I don't care. He's the best written character. And Anthony Starr's, you know, Anthony Starr's just giving the best performance with him. Um, there's no way you can take him off the board. So I, I very much could see him, in the end, killing Soldier Boy. And now you go into next season, diving in more to the God Complex. And if you have a soup that could really take over the world, is that Homelander's endgame? So one of the things that makes the character interesting, because you could totally see it go that way, but is that what he's trying to do? And I, I just, I can't wait. I feel like we're going to get some better pop moments for, for Homelander. Uh, you know, the Maeve one was a good one, but like, for the most part, this is probably the most tamed I feel like we've seen Homelander all season, even though... He, like I said, he's completely unhinged, and we're kind of resetting that so that he can have a different kind of mental break with all this stuff that he's now dealing with, which I love. But one of the mistakes or things that you could say is an issue, a point in the deep in, in front of the, you know, the, the crime, I guess, angle or, or portion or wing of Vought, he fires half the stat. You saw that room when he walked in with all those cupcakes, and there was, what, four people in there? Um, which immediately makes things difficult for Starlight trying to track down this supervillain who we know to be, of course, uh, Soldier Boy. But, like, that's one of those things where it's, like, this extra layer of responsibility wanting to make the company a superhero company, running the company is that kind of backfire for Homelander. And, you know, Deep doesn't get a lot of play here. We, you know, one scene with him on screen, but you're just seeing the... The pure control that his wife has on him. I mean, everything he says is scripted. She knows every line. I'm waiting for him to divert from something that she's written and how that reacts. Because why Why are we going to continually show her reciting the same things he's saying unless at some point that's going to break? But, 
like you can see that she has this control over him and is that an extension of, of that cult that he he got out of like i don't think she's out and i think she's manipulating deep into a place that's gonna give her an opportunity i don't know what that opportunity is or what it's for but it's where it seems to be going and the other seven character or member that we have going on a train he gets some real big stuff and you want to talk about resetting a character here's this guy who honestly it feels like a train is just trying to survive and knowing that if he uses his powers his heart could explode he's terrified he doesn't know where he fits he sees in the first few episodes that homelander is completely dismissing him because he isn't being a soup in any way shape or form He's presented this opportunity, you know, to collaborate with his family, you know, and work with his brother to do actual good. And he kind of shies away from it because he's not trying to use his powers and instead goes the Vought corporate route. Let me let me do what my brother wants me to do, but from the Vought Corporation standpoint. And it's one of these things where like the show and how it adapts elements of things that we've been living through you know i mean there, there are a lot of trumpian type references and things going on here and you know like you, you hear homelander talking about there's nothing to worry about go back outside do well was this a, you know that's how it was at the beginning of the pandemic you know trying to talk down the pure disaster you know that that ends up becoming and how threatening you know the the virus was and out of control it was and that's the same with soldier boy right and those parallels the way the show is able to adapt real life things you know and using the news cycles and the things that they're doing in the show is just exquisite um but you end up in this place where it's like you know what you know what what's shown to you know what's shown to the public this this is what's good or this is how you handle this type of thing and you, you see how that backfires in, in a train's you know face and does in a way that now do you see that shift that i think we've been waiting for right like there there were moments where it was like all right last episode a train could have made that shift to kind of redemption by working with supersonic but instead saves his own skin and that directly leads to exactly where we are now, you know, trying to save himself and be in Homelander's good graces to then do this thing for his brother blows up to now his brother's paralyzed. You know what I mean? Like that's a legitimate consequence. And you're talking about the fastest man alive, a guy who has also had his legs taken from him, right? In a completely different way. But like this show is so freaking genius, man. The writing's so good. Eric Kripke and his team, man, they they come up with the craziest shit. But like the the I have I have a treat coming for you guys. I'm not gonna spoil it. It'll probably come out after this video, so probably near the end of the week, maybe going into the weekend. But I may have shown my parents something and i may have recorded it for you guys but afterwards I, I honestly i've talked this show up for years to my parents they're both superhero fans um my mom who's a big superman fan but also kind of likes bad guy like homelander much like for myself very similar i think for my mother would be a character she would adore um even though you hate him um just because of what anthony star is doing on screen with the character the character the bad guys are always the most interesting characters because you never know what they're going to do that unpredictability um but it's one of these things i've tried to show up and i've showed them something that you might turn most parents that have never seen the show off to it um and my dad actually said he's like after i saw that and you continued to talk this show up so much and how good it is and how strong the race like maybe i'm gonna watch it now which i love um, and you guys, like I said, nice little surprise for you guys coming up. Keep your eyes peeled for, for some things with my parents. But like, it's one of these things where like the layers and just the different ways the show is operating on, it's nuts. But yeah, I mean, everybody kind of feels like they've been, not that they've had a, an arc, right? Their arc is still going, but all of our characters have had some sort of reset in, in this episode where now there is something new being introduced that all of them are going to have to deal with to get to the next place that's going to take us down the back, you know, third of the season. And 
I'm just so stoked for all of it, man. Like, where all of our characters are, I think, are in interesting places. And it just feels like this show is bubbling. So let's get the Sea Maniacs up. This is a, 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 a palate cleanser episode, so to speak. So I'm coming back down from where we've been the last few episodes, which has been top-end boy stuff. But this is the type of episode where you kind of have to reset everything. You know, we can't be here all the time. We have to be able, like I said before, to come down to create a new pop for all of these characters and where we have left all our characters. From everybody on the Seven to everybody in the Boys, they're all still dealing with the things that were set up in the, the, the first four episodes, but now there's this new added layer to each of their storylines that I can't wait to see where it goes and where it plays out. Anthony Starr, one of his smaller episodes this season, but continues to be phenomenal. Big time episode for Butcher. Um, I love what's going on with Carl Urban and how he plays Butcher, right? Like you're seeing that he doesn't have a line, that he continues to burn his friends, his people. And it's not that he doesn't care. You can see that when he has some of these conversations and what Urban is doing from that perspective is really coming across in the performance. But like you're at a place where you have to do whatever it takes and butchers that guy. And this is a really good episode that really establishes where he is and what Urban is doing is fantastic. I love the stuff with Huey and Starlight. Jack Quaid continues to just, I can't wait to see where he ends up and what the superpower stuff for him is ultimately going to bring him. Um, Cause to be able to, 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 to go to butcher over Starlight is an interesting aspect for this character, especially with where he was at the beginning where we've got the seven, you know, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things that are out there and I don't know where they're all going to go. So between phenomenal performances, really, really, really strong writing is another four and a half out of five C maniacs for me. I don't really see myself dropping below the 4.5 this season. That's how good the writing is. And where we are, like I said, you've got to be able to come up and down. It's a balancing game. You can't be at a five all the time. And it's not that you're purposely doing, you know, anything to hurt the episode of the show. I think every episode you could say is a five in its own way, but like where these are going to fall when you try to rank them. This is that episode where boom, we're resetting everything and we're going to get a new pop. that's going to start building and coming next week. I would imagine uh, the, the, the soldier boy and, and Homelander stuff is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to, to this Butcher Huey Soldier Boy team up. And I think we're gonna get some crazy shit next week. So I, I'm always here for a palate cleanser and a, and a reset episode, as long as you can deliver really, really high end content and storytelling and just, you know, quality stuff. And that's what the boys does here and does so in an episode that isn't, you know, the biggest Homelander episode. I think that, you know, and this isn't a bad thing, but they've really been leaning on Homelander this season. And what he's had going on in the first four episodes really has elevated this because Anthony Starr is doing the best work that he's done. But you could have an episode that's this good and not lean on Homelander. It's one of those things that just gets me excited. Um, they're, they're, doing, they're doing phenomenal things that are over at Amazon with the boys. So four and a half out of five C-Maniacs for me. That's all my spoiler thoughts. Pretty sure I hit everything. Can't wait to see where we go next week. Now it's your turn, man. I'm, I want to know what you're thinking. What are you loving about the boys? What are you looking forward to next week? What things work for you this episode? Like I said, I, I don't think this episode was as big as the last few. I don't think it hit as hard. Um, but was another one of these, like, you're building really good stuff in this episode. So were you feeling that or was this a, a bit of a, a drop for you? Um, anything you got, man. Good, bad, indifferent on the boys. Season 3, episode 5 goes down below in the comment section. Look forward to talking to you guys down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Men as we approach our last three episodes of The Boys. Um, we got uh, Obi-Wan wrapping up on Wednesday. Um, by the time this goes up, that'll probably already be over. But you want to be here for those reactions and things. Um, you, you want to just check out anything we got going on in movies, TV, trailer, reactions. You haven't, you want to show a little love and support to this guy. I love when I see that subscriber number go up. And show that love and support. Join the C-Maniac Nation simply 
by jumping over there, hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that little bell if you want those alerts. And until next time for the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down, I've been the C-Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, you must be sticking around because you're looking for more content feature in this guy. Well, guess what? You're in the right place. You can check out more videos right here and right here. Uh, and if you have and you want to come join that C-Maniac Nation, you can hit that subscribe right over there.